So nice to see you. I'm Renee, and I am your host here in the Making Healthier Policies group. Let's make sure everybody's online, shall we? Sometimes when we stream, things don't work. So I want to make sure we're going live. Let's see, are we streaming? I don't know. But I am Renee. I hear it streaming. Let's see, are we there? If you're there, can you say hello? Welcome, welcome. Huh, I don't know that I can see everybody streaming today. What a weird deal. But maybe we're not. Well, let's pretend we are. First of all, I want to thank Melanie and Tanya and those who always catch us on the replay if they can't catch us live. I want to say thank you because it really matters to me that you're here and that you're able to see the information. And so I'm really hoping that you're able to connect with me. But if for some reason that you're not and you can't see me, well, that's a bummer. And hopefully we can get that fixed because for some reason, I don't see us going live. So one second, please, as we figure out what is happening here, because I don't want to be without you. And for some reason, it is, well, it says it's live. Well, what do you know? We're live. I don't know if it's live in Facebook, but we're live. Yay. So I also want to thank Tanya. She always comes in and gives me some helpful feedback. Always able to tell me if she's been watching um, and giving me critiques and things on how I can improve and change. And so that I love you, Tanya, for that. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Brene Schulte, and I am a former clinician. Actually, I'm a current clinician. What am I saying? I'm a former politician, and I am a recovering workaholic. And so I work on making healthier policies at home, at work, and in the community. And I am grateful that you all are here because it is really important to me that we are all healthier and that we work together on making healthy policies. And what I mean by that is sometimes at home for yourself, you got to make better boundaries. And sometimes for those you're thinking about working in the workplace, you got to make policies, procedures, things that help you be healthy. And when you're thinking about the community, well, all kinds of laws need to be better to make us healthier. That's what we talk about here. But I'm so glad you're here because we are in the middle of a series on making the biggest mistakes of working on ourselves and our own policies. And we've been talking about this now for a couple of weeks, heading into our policy party. Who here is excited about the policy party coming up in April? Ooh, right after Easter, that Monday, join me. We're going to be having a party and we're going to have some great prizes. Really hope to see you there. And we're going to make sure that you are included. And so I'm so excited to hear that. And I'm excited that you're going to join us. So let's see you there. And so what I'm talking about today is about policies. And we've been talking about the mistakes that we've been making. We've already talked about two. So two weeks ago, we talked about trying to change everything all at once, thinking about like those New Year's resolutions, right? We try to change everything and nothing gets changed and it doesn't actually go well. The second week, we talked about believing everything you think. Because sometimes we think that we believe everything that is correct, but it is not always correct. And it's not always actually what we should be thinking and talked about how to break that down. Today, we're going to be talking about the third big mistake that we make as individuals trying to help ourselves we do not ask for help. And we do that on the policy side too and try to be the lone ranger when you're working out in public, that doesn't go well. But when you're at home trying to do it yourself, that doesn't go well either. So let's talk about that. What could we do in Elver to get some help? So if you're listening today live or on the replay, put help in the comments. I'd love to hear you there. And I am absolutely not seeing this go live on Facebook, which means I think we have a problem, but it's going live elsewhere. So I guess we'll figure that out and have to fix it for next week. There's always a tech challenge, everyone. It's always a challenge. So today I can't figure out what that's going on. So if you're supposed to be watching me on Facebook and you can't find me, I'm really sorry. We'll have to post this after the fact because something is up. But if you watch the replay, type help because we're going to talk specifically about how do we get help? And we're going to talk about three different groups of people that you could look to to get that kind of help. And I don't think we always think about this. We kind of don't brainstorm exactly how to get help. We might know we need it and we might know that we think it's sometimes easier to do it all ourselves, but sometimes you actually need some help. And it's not always experts because not all of us have the money to pay for everything, right? So let's see if we can figure out what we need when we're thinking about getting help. So I don't know about you, but sometimes I get tired of hearing myself talk in my own head about the issues going on in my life. Anybody else? You're just tired of hearing it, right? You can only think so many things to yourself. And sometimes you need to verbally be able to bounce that off other people, right? And so how do you do that? Who do you talk to? How, who should be people that you go to? Like, I actually really like asking for help. Yep, I'm kind of one of those crazy people. I figured out a long time ago 
that a lot of people want to help and they can't help unless you ask them because they don't know you need it. So if you've kept it all inside, there's many, many, many helpful people out there in the world and they don't know that you need help. So they're not going to offer. And so, but if you need it and you ask, they're willing to do it. And by not asking, sometimes we rob them of the opportunity to share and to do whatever their gift is. So if there's somebody that you know that is really gifted in gardening as an example, and you're not, and you ask them a question, they're honored that you asked, and that's their love, that's their passion. So of course they wanna teach you about it and they wanna show you how to do it and to make it better. And you could learn so much just by asking somebody who's good at something that you're not good at and find out what could we do to make that better. So today we're gonna talk about how do you find these kind of people? There are people out there that want to help you and that you have no idea they're out there. So we're gonna talk about three groups, all right? And they're for different types of help. So let's see if we can follow along. I'm gonna tell you what they are first and then we'll dive in a little deeper. There's three groups of people that you might wanna get help from. First, people in the same boat as you, the empathizers, the people that are like you, that are in the same life phase that you are in, the same group of people, the same, they're going through the similar kinds of things. And you all want to talk about it and share about it because you feel better just knowing you're not alone and there's other people in the same boat, right? Those are great people to talk to. The second group, maybe a little further ahead than me. Maybe they're in the same path. They've been in that boat, but they're further along. They're kind of a mentor, right? So the first group is empathizer because they're with you. The second is a mentor because they're further ahead. And the third group, is professionals, professionals who can see a bigger picture. And this could be coaches, counselors, doctors, people like that who have a bigger picture in mind, who can see beyond just your own personal challenge, but how it relates to other people. So I guess there really is a fourth group. And this is the group of people that they've never been where I've been. And they actually have no life experience like mine. And these are not people you should go to for help. And I don't go for them to help for help and neither should you. So let's start with that last group first, the people not to ask about help. The people you don't ask for help are people who have never been in your shoes. So you're married. You don't ask a single person marriage advice. Hmm. You're a parent. You don't ask people without kids for parenting advice. Generally speaking, you're going to get some theories that are not actually good. There is a quote by John Wilmot that sums it up. And he said, before I got married, I had six theories on bringing up children. Now I have six kids, no theories. Truth, right? Exactly. So just because you have an idea of how you should do it, you've trained in it, and that's your area of expertise. If you haven't walked the walk, those aren't the right people for you. So stop talking to your single friends about your marriage or stop talking to the people that are not parents about having kids because they're not going to be in your shoes. They're not going to understand. So that that group number four does cross it off. They're not on the list. So let's go back up to the list and talk about why would it be good to talk to each of these three groups? Step number one, group number one was your empathizers, the people that are in your shoes. So these people are going to be great for a lot of different things. So I can give you personal examples. I can give you different examples, but say they're in a similar family situation with similar challenges. These folks have a lot of empathy and understanding (coughs) about what your challenges are. Right now, I'm a caretaker of my elderly parents. Now, I haven't moved all the way in. I'm caretaking from a distance, and that is a difference. People living every day in the caretaking role is very different than from a distance, but there are some similarities and overlap. So I'm in a couple of groups of with people who also take care of their parents. And it is super helpful because they've been through it. They understand your questions. They deal with it every day. They've got some good response and they can just sort of help, right? They are in that same scenario. So they can be a shoulder to cry on, good listening. They have experience in that area, maybe education in that area. And they may have a lot of advice that's worthwhile because they have kind of in the same boat. Maybe they've moved in already and you're thinking about having to move in or whatever. This could be possible if you've got kids and you've got teenagers and you've got girlfriends that are also teenage that have teenagers. Awesome. You can empathize with each other what it's like to have teenagers in the home. I had teenagers in my home a while back. It's been a minute, 
but I have those experiences. I never had small kids. We only did foster care for big kids. So I've got some great teenage experience. Now I don't have baby experience. So you ask me about bottles. What's the best bottle, the best diaper, the best. I didn't do all that. I did some of that for my nieces, nephews, friends, but not like day in, day out. So that's not a question you ask me. You asked me about teenagers, lived it, breathed it, was it, loved it, hated it, the whole shebang. So I could tell you a whole lot of different perspectives, but they weren't my kids. They were foster kids. And even that's a difference. You see what I'm saying? So when you're thinking about people that empathize with you, how similar is their background? It's going to matter. And sometimes though, you don't just stick everybody in that same crowd in a group. So thinking about this, sometimes you think about support groups and support groups can be good if you've got some leadership and some people who have moved on out of that space. But putting a whole lot of, say, people with depression or a whole lot of people with loss, with no leaders that are further ahead, that's just going to be people wallowing in the same mess and they're not going to make a lot of progress. So there is something for empathizers, but there's also something for the next group. Group number two is mentors. The best combination of a support group have people that are in the same boat, but some that have moved along a little further. So they're a little further in their grief journey, as an example, if they've lost someone, right? They've got people that are, you know, still in loss, but maybe they've moved a little further. They're a couple of years out so that they can show them that there's a path beyond the immediate loss. That is a great support group. Mentors are awesome because they could be, uh, mentors could be, they're further ahead than you. So maybe they have adult kids and you're dealing with teenagers and you're about to kill a teenager. They're like, hey, I know that's rough. Mine are now 25, 26, 27. And this is how it's changed and what was different along the way, right? Maybe they've been married 10, 15, 20 years and you're dealing with the marriage challenge. And they're like, oh man, I remember these years were tough, but this is what we did to get through it or whatever. So they're a little further ahead on the path. Does that make sense? So they could be parents, but maybe older kids. They could be married, but further along. They could be um, sober, but further along. Or maybe, you know, maybe they've lost someone or that's close to them, but they're further down the path. That's the mentor group. Now they won't be exactly in the same spot and years are going to be different. Like me raising foster kids, what years back is different than the foster care system today, but there are some things in common that we can chat about. I can mentor in that space, even though it's not going to be exact. And so you may have people in that empathy group that are exactly like you and this mentor group that's a little different, a little further along. And both of those can be very helpful. Now, the third group, this is the group we always think about when we think about asking for help, but I don't think we're really creative in this space, but these are professionals and professionals could be coaches, but they could also be counselors. They could be therapists, doctors, chiropractors, personal trainers, nutritionists, and depending on the specialty that you need, all kinds of things are at your disposal in this professional category. You might need a CPA to help you with your bookkeeping. You might need, you know, who knows what you need, but you think about all the different types of professionals in your life, that things that you probably shouldn't just do on your own. And I know for me, anything technology is outside my pay grade. I just don't get it. I don't understand it. And I'm going to get mad and I need help. Now, that could be somebody that has some tech experience more than me, more like a friend or a mentor, or it could be I flat broke it and need some help. This depends. So this is when you have to think about how many times have you heard I went to this person and it didn't work. I tried counseling once and I hated it. I never went back. Right. Well, let me just tell you, you've been to one counselor. You've been to one counselor. And they're all individual and unique, just like your doctor. You may have a primary care doctor that you just do not like. There's more. You can fire your primary care doctor. Yes, you can. I have done that a few times and find somebody else that you like better. That is possible. And so, and highly recommended. If you don't get along with that doctor, don't think that they see things your way or they're not an expert in the area that you need, keep looking because just because you've met one, you've met one. It's the same as if you went and got your car taken in for even an oil change right? You might go to the Jiffy Lube over here and it's awesome. And you go to the other one across town and it's terrible. You like one, but not both, right? So you would maybe recommend the one, but not two. Name it, any kind of professionals. You're not going to be the same across the board. So just because you went to blank once does not mean you never go back. You might've tried chiropractic once. Did you know there's all kinds of chiropractic care? And so you need to think about what do you need? What do you like? What do you not like? And then go find somebody that can help. And before you go, make a list of like questions and things that you're looking for and why and kind of interview them. Talk to them about your challenges and see what they're there to serve you. So you can go into a doctor's office and be like, these are my questions. Is this going to be you? 
oftentimes I know that if I'm going to go into something, I'm not big on taking medication without trying on my own to help the situation and to get off the medication if I can. The goal for me is always to change diet, exercise, whatever, to not be reliant on meds. That works most of the time. It doesn't work all the time. But I go into a doctor and if their attitude is you have to take this medication because you're never going to get around it by doing X, Y, Z, that's not my doctor. I want a doctor who's going to partner with me and let me try. Now, at the end of the day, if I still need the medication to feel better and I cannot figure out the diet, the exercise, the whatever to make me feel good, then I'm going to acquiesce and go, yep, you're right. I'm going to stay on it. But I want somebody who's going to partner with me to try. Does that make sense? So when you're looking for professionals, you've seen one, you've seen one. So now let's brainstorm. Who might be in your group that can help you? Who do you know that's in the same boat that are your friends that you can talk to? Who do you know that might be further along that's a mentor that could help? And who do you know that's a professional? What kind of professional do you need to help you in this season? You don't always need the same professionals for life. You might need a tax advisor after you get audited like we have. And that was when I needed a CPA. And then there's other times in life, maybe I don't, maybe I can do my own taxes, but maybe certain seasons, right? You need certain things. So what do you need? Think about that. And there is no reason to do this alone. We are here to help. Again, if you're listening today live or in the chat, put help. We'd love to be able to chat with you about that. And if you need more help, send me a personal message. Tell me what you're looking for. I have long lists of resources. This is what I do. And so I'm really great at connecting and networking you to people. So you may, I may not know, but I know somebody that does because that's what I do. So if there's somebody you need and you're like, I just am beating my head, can't find a person. Hey, reach out. Let me see if I can help you because I'd love to get you connected to the right help that you need. Once again, there's only two weeks left till our policy party. Right after that, right after Easter on that Monday, we're going to start. It's a five-day party, and we're excited to see you. We're going to be talking about this growth plan, about some specific tips that you can do to get some personal policies moving in the right direction. And we're going to be talking about public policy. What do you need to do to get your voice heard and to make that message resonate so that you never leave a meeting feeling unheard ever again? Hope to see you then. Have a great day, everybody. We'll talk to you 